<laughs> so what you need to do is define the pain point or the interest point, the uniqueness for you, for your business. How do we create that? We've seen some examples. How do we create your USP? Use your biggest benefits, not feature, okay? The feature is feel a six foot tall, feel a smart. Those are features. The benefit is we have a fantastic marketplace to sell our items on. Does that make sense? There is goat's milk in my soap. There's oatmeal in my soap. There's natural ingredients in my soap. Oh my God, who cares? There's that in everybody else's soap too. What's in it for me as a buyer? Think about that question. What's in it for me from a buyer's standpoint? Be unique. Be very unique. Don't copy the Domino's or the NyQuil or something you saw on TV. Solve an industry pain point or performance gap. What did I do? Spa products are expensive. To get a treatment with my milk and honey body polish, which I supplied to the spas, will cost you $85. You can buy a jar from me for 20. Huge difference. I believe everyone deserves it. So find your passion, find that pain point or that performance gap and fill it. What can you do differently? Be specific and offer proof. You know, don't go saying, I can get this item to your house in 24 hours. And how are you gonna, do I wanna know how you're gonna do that, seriously. Share your secrets. Condense into one clear and concise sentence. This is something like we saw earlier, something catchy. So you take, there's a lot of benefits to what we do. I personally think that you are all fantastic sellers and wonderful entrepreneurs because you're here. You've spent your time and your money to get away from behind the computer and get out and learn something to move your business forward. I give you all a huge kudos for that point. So take the things about you that make you unique. What makes, you, what makes you unique, Gladys? What makes your business unique? I think it's you. That's what I think it is. What can you bring to me that no one else can? You know, what can you do that no one else can? You. I can't be you and you can't be me. There's something in you that makes it different. But you have to sit down and figure out what that is. Integrate it into all marketing materials. Now, what do we tweet? What do we Facebook? What do we blog? What's in our descriptions? Is this starting to make sense now? Is that snake coming around biting his tail? Once you have a USP, you no longer have to ask, what do I tweet? What do I Facebook? What do I put in my banner ad? What do I, I mean, you don't, the question is moot at this point because you now have a path. And deliver on your USP's promise. If I tell you, it's spa quality, not spa price. You get it, and it feels exactly like that stuff you got from the dollar store for a dollar. I have destroyed my business. I have not done anything for myself. I have not moved forward. Does everybody understand what a USP is? Y'all are being quiet and it scares me, okay? <laughs> Make some noise. <laughs> so what happens? It all adds up. What's two plus two? Four. No, it's five. Uh -huh. Now I know where my audience is, so I know where to market. If I've defined my target market, I know if they're on Facebook versus Twitter, or maybe there's some Yahoo groups. That would be better, focused for me. Now I have a unique selling proposition to build my efforts around. Now I know what to tweet, what to Facebook, what to blog. Because now you have clearly marked out point A to point Z, with point B and Y in between, easily planned and attainable in steps in your overall marketing plan. With the USP, you can do it all. You can design your, your cost per click ad, you can tweet, you can Facebook, because you know what your focus is. You can actually speak to the correct audience in the correct language. If none of you spoke, Johanna does, German. <laughs> and I got up here and did this entire presentation in German. What would that do for you? Thank you. <laughs> Building relationships that are grounded in a solid foundation. And that foundation is again what? U S oh God people. U S P. -S -P. <laughs> All right. I can now build a positive marketing plan. And I want to stop for two seconds. I'm really trying to rush through mine because I know we're busy. Did you see that word positive right there? Mm -hmm. If I show up in your booth. 
And the first thing you do is start putting down other sellers. I am yeah. no longer interested. Mm -hmm. The negativity is ruining my karma, baby. I'm gone. Keep it positive. If you are speaking in a positive manner, you keep the buyer in a positive place. Negative people do not click the buy now button. Positive people do. So no, it's not about you. I know, we, I love John's deal with it, it's all about me, because I actually have that at home. But it's not. <laughs> Never forget, it's all about the client. It's not about you, it's not about your business, or the venue, Bonanza, eBay, eCreator, no. It's about the client. That's what your USP is about, that's what your marketing plan is about. Because if it's not, there's going to be a huge language barrier. Do you know one of my favorite, favorite, favorite quotes is? The greatest stumbling block to communication is the belief that it has already been achieved. Mm -hmm. Now I'm standing up here, I've been talking for how long, and I've been talking very fast to try and move things along. And I believe that I have communicated to you. But if you walk out of here and you have no clue what a USP is, you have no clue how to even begin a marketing plan, then what have I done? I've done nothing. I've wasted my time and yours. So remember that it's about them. You communicate for them to them. Instead of shouting about your items, help the customers shout about your items. I'll give you a good example of that one. I'm on Twitter, and a client comes to me, and they're asking me about Sweet Orange and Pomegranate Lotion. And we're having a great conversation. She's a fan. She's not just a client. I admit it, okay? <laughs> so we're having this fantastic, and it's public, public conversation. What happens? There's only one left. While she's talking to me about it, someone else goes in the booth and buys it. It's gone. And so now she goes, oh my God, it's gone. Now tell me this is not the most, you can't pay for this kind of marketing. Seriously, you cannot. Here she is wanting it. Somebody else bought it and it's all public on Twitter. So guess what became in high demand real quick in my booth? Sweet orange and pomegranate, let go smoke lotion. Because I had the conversation, the correct language, with the correct target market. So, questions, comments, and I want to say, Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Can I talk fast enough for y'all? <laughs> really seriously. Judy, you want to come put the other PowerPoint going? What I want to do now, do you have any quick, like, 